In the news tonight, a reminder to employers of their responsibility to provide a safe working environment after a worker falls to his death. Bridgetown business operators want initiatives undertaken to breathe more life into the city. A new opportunity for Barbadian students to earn a degree from an international university. And in sports, Barbados Baby Gems going for the Jean Pierre three-peat against Grenada. Broadcasting from our studios in the Pine St. Michael, this is CBC News Night, starting now. Very good evening to you. I'm Lisa Bruma. Thank you so much for tuning in. In our top story tonight, in the wake of 51-year-old Guyanese national Andal McGarrell falling to his death at, at an Apes Hill St. James construction site, Chief Labor Officer Claudette Hope Greenwich is reminding employers that they are legally responsible for providing a safe working environment for their workers. Ms. Hope Greenwich told CBC News this duty of employers is clearly outlined in the Safety and Health at Work or Shaw Act, which she stressed has been in place for more than a decade. Employers are reminded that there is the responsibility, speaking primarily under the or in the context of the Safety and Health at Work Act and the accompanying regulations that we have now to provide and maintain a workplace that is safe for the worker and by extension, safe for the persons who will, um, you know, be visiting to do business um, with you. And uh, a key point that we in the safety and health section do often do often use is that when a person comes to work on any particular day, it is uh, with a certain sense of pride that an employer then sees that that person leaves in the good state that they came in, and if they did not, the aim is at least they leave feeling better. And that is something that can be achieved through the proper application of occupational safety and health uh, management practices. The chief labor officer also reiterated the importance of organizations which have more than 25 employees establishing safety committees. She explained that such committees must involve members of management and workers tasked with promoting workplace safety and identifying potential hazards. That look into the safety and health concerns, implications, matters um, developing or, you know, in the future, to make sure that that aspect of the, the workplace is, you know, functioning well. If in the event that it is not practical to have a safety committee, for example, where you may have less than 25 persons, maybe a small operation, then you are still required to have some sort of consultation with the employees on safety and health. And in that instance, you need to have a safety delegate, that person who will be the interface between employer and employees on things concerning safety. Ms. Hope Greenwich further stated the Labor Department is willing to offer assistance to organizations struggling to establish effective occupational safety and health practices. In fact, she noted that on a weekly basis, organizations reach out to the department regarding safety and health matters. She also made it clear the department visits workplaces to carry out inspections of the working environment. Meanwhile, General Secretary of the Barbados Workers' Union, Tony Moore, said the tragic death is a sobering reminder of the critical importance of occupational health and safety. Ms. Moore said the fact that such accidents are taking place points to a disturbing trend of safety lapses in the workforce. I still have the image in my head, one which I will never forget, as not too long ago we mourned a port worker who was crushed beneath a container. We can no longer label these as isolated incidents. They are a call to action for all of us. Safety in the workplace is non-negotiable. It is the right of every worker to perform his or her duties in a safe and secure environment. While we demand that construction companies and employers adhere to the highest occupational safety and health standards, we must also embrace our responsibility to be our brother's keeper. If you see something, 
say something. It is on all of us to point out and address safety lapses, no matter where we see them. Some business operators in Bridgetown want more done to make it a hive of activity. A CBC team took to the city today to hear directly from them. Sean Farrell reports. In this prime location on Broad Street in Bridgetown, there are a number of closed doors where there were once thriving businesses. Yet the city remains a hub of activity with businesses big and small operating. While some are satisfied with the state of Bridgetown, others believe it's in need of rejuvenation. That mixed reaction is evident over on Swan Street among the vendors. Razak Goddard, who started playing his trade about five weeks ago, says he's quite content. They ain't about, they ain't about to start off it, and they plan to continue. But I hear like, certain things about vendors go to move from certain places, like if anything, and they all come to die with like, some boy, like put me some place that we can still make an honest dollar to like, deal with your family and, and also deal with yourself. But, Everything is good for now, as you can see it, and what for better days ahead for sure. On the other hand, another vendor who preferred to speak off camera and did not want to give her name says rent is too high and is calling on Prime Minister Mia Amor Motley to tour the area to see firsthand their concerns. To our beloved Prime Minister Mia Motley, we would like you to just take a day and come into Swan Street and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with some of the vendors, some of the people who own salons, some of the people who are paying rent to conduct their business. We think that you should take a day and come and have a word with us and see what our concerns and our problems really are. Meanwhile, Managing Director at Woolworth, Martin Bryan, also weighed in, sharing his thoughts on what's needed to revitalize Bridgetown. Lighting needs to be improved. Um, you know, the, the city needs a sprucing up. I don't know, I don't have the solutions to it in terms of the persons who own the, you know, the real estate, but certain some incentives to, you know, paint the building, make it look fresh, etc. He also believes some of the development planned for the city will make a difference. The Pearhead project, I think, is a good happening for Bridgetown. I think once that gets underway and once that comes to completion, There'll be more incentive for, you know, the average Joe to come into town to experience that shopping experience and the restaurants and cafes are going to come with it. Um, so, I mean, you, you say some people are moving on town, but those, as soon as one shop closes in town, another opens. Mr. Bryan adds a shuttle service, improved parking and removing the homeless from the streets will also help. Sean Farrell, CBC News. Barbadian students have a new opportunity to earn bachelor's degrees in agriculture and related sciences from an international university. This is possible through a partnership between the Barbados Community College, BCC, and Delaware State University, DSU. Almost one year ago, when the two institutions embarked on the historic journey, the response to the call for applications was overwhelming. Speaking at the signing of a memorandum of understanding to formalize the partnership, Minister of Education Kay McConney said she would speak pleased that after a rigorous selection process, 60 students were chosen to pursue studies in mathematics, chemistry, biology and agriculture. Some of the unique features of the program include the provision of cutting-edge technological tools for students to work with, the accelerated pace of course delivery and DSU student management and support system. The minister says persons who successfully complete the program will be better positioned to help boost the local agricultural sector and other aspects of the economy. And we know that it is this cohort and others before them who will continue to evolve the mindset of farmers as it relates to how we treat the agriculture and to food security in general. Bringing the technology that excites so many of you to the work that we do in agriculture. And we know that the program from Delaware State University also adds value in so many areas. And President of Delaware State University, Dr. Tony Allen, says the university intends to extend the partnership. So students, let me just tell you the institutions that you belong to. Barbados Community College has a rich history. We could not do it without them. This is not a one-way partnership. Delaware State believes in people just like you. 
folks who are trying to change the trajectory for themselves, their families, and their communities. And I have 6,400 students that look just like you that are trying to do the same thing. So we are one. Coming up on Newsnight, progress being made with the effort to resolve the crisis in Haiti. Barbados Ambassador to CARICOM David Kamishong is reporting progress on the way forward for Haiti. According to reports out of Port-au-Prince, leaders have finalized a political accord for a proposed transition government. Members of the Transition Council sent their plan to CARICOM on Sunday. Well, Ambassador, Cari uh, Ambassador Kamishong rather, says the decision comes after a month of negotiations and discussions. He was a guest on the Conversations on CARICOM segment on CBC TV 8's Morning Barbados. That's very good news because now, now that they have made that agreement, we are in a position where that presidential transitional council can be installed and it can then go on to do the work that it has to do, which is it has to appoint a new prime minister, it has to appoint a new electoral council, it has to appoint a new set of ministers, and basically it has to work with those bodies that it will appoint to take Haiti through the next two years or so towards a new, um, new free and fair elections when the Haitian people can finally elect who they really wish to govern their country. Ambassador Kamishong says restoring security remains a priority. He says the Haitian National Police need help. I think we really probably need to hear from the leadership of the Haitian National Police themselves. They probably need to give the guidance on whether they need reinforcements coming in. But suffice to say, I think now that the presidential council is about to be installed, it will, I think it will be up to those leadership elements in Haiti to work out exactly um, what they want. And I think the role of the rest of us will be to support them. I think we have to trust them. Some added exposure for Destination Barbados and Crop Over as tourism officials marketed the island during the recently held Jamaica Carnival. The Barbados Tourism Marketing Incorporated, through its business development officer, Harriet Smith, and marketing officer, Melissa McGarry, were in Kingston spreading the word about the sweetest summer festival. Through a campaign of sorts dubbed Chasing the Vibes, Barbados was on show during Jamaica's hottest events for their carnival season. Social media creator Joel Manning was among the Barbados team. We're coming to them and we're showing them, okay, we're appealing to their various senses. So for example, sight. So we have a virtual reality experience whereby you put on the virtual headset mm -hmm. and you can actually see Barbados. So you might see East Point, you might see Hilton. Nice. It's like, hey, I want to be there. Or we brought our mixologist, Natasha, mm -hmm. and she's whipping up our cocktails, things like, is a vibe. Wow. And in the case of blending various rums, because Barbados is the birthplace of rum. Yes. So blending various rums, so alone, okay, this is a taste of crop over as well. Mm -hmm. Then we have the functional items. So, you know, your backpacks, your fanny packs, you know, your caps, mm -hmm. right. bucket hats, real popular. So things that you will use when you're on the road in Barbados just vacation anywhere in the world and finally the case of hey you have a chance to win a trip for two from Kingston to Barbados to enjoy crop over as well a memorandum of understanding between the Grantley Adams International Airport Incorporated and the National Transformation Initiative has been inked it was signed by Chief Executive Officer of the Grantley Adams International Airport Incorporated, Hadley Bourne, and Director of the NTI, Dr. The Honorable Alison Leacock. The MOU is set to take the airport and, by extension, Barbados to a new level. Dr. Leacock called the two-year exercise training for transformation. We are going to focus on service with a very different perspective. Not an industry but a way of life, a culture, but most importantly, a habit. So service isn't only about business. Yes, business matters, because the businesses have to make money to remain open and to hire us. But it must be about our culture. It must be about our way of life, because that is the authenticity that attracts everyone. It is the authenticity that attracts us to each other. And as locals, as the Prime Minister says, we are the first tourists 
than we should be. Well, Chief Executive Officer of the Grantley Adams International Airport Incorporated, Hadley Bourne, said it's a new chapter in the life of the airport. These are things that will not just start and stop. This will be a continuum across this organization. Even when I'm gone, that is what must be enshrined in our mantle going forward. That is part of the change element that we are trying to achieve. Sports Night, brought to you with the compliments of Great Health Works, agents for Omega XL. It's time for that promised look at sports. Now we go over to Anne-Marie Burke, who's standing by with the details. Good evening, Anne-Marie. Good evening to you, Lisa. I'll start with news of netball. As Barbados Baby Gems are at the moment going for glory at the Jean Pierre Caribbean Netball Youth Championships in St. Lucia. Barbados Gems are up against Grenada in the final, which, if won, will be a three-peat of titles for the Bajan youth. After the first quarter, the Baby Gems are trailing 5-6. We've goal shoot Kiana Hart perfect to a four from four. Now, yesterday, Barbados finished second in the team shooting contest, scoring 94 goals with 148 attempts for a 63.51% accuracy. Dominica were the winners with a 99 of 147 for a 67.35%. And we're back with the promised cricket news. West Indies white ball head coach Darren Sammy says the two-time champions are capable of lifting the ICC Men's T20 Cricket World Cup trophy on home soil. And as part of their preparations, a historic T20 A team tour of Nepal, consisting of five matches, is set for April 27th to May 5th. Speaking during a media conference at the Lloyd Erskine Sandiford Center, Sami, who led the men in Maroon to the title in 2012 and 2016, and is the only captain to win the tournament twice, believes his team can deliver in front of their fans. I believe strongly that um, my team could win. And the preparation did not only start, is not going to start now. You know, Miles spoke about A-team tours. Um, with conversations with uh, the chairman of selectors, um, understanding what it would take to win the World Cup. And it is a process, uh, myself as, a, as head coach, and with our other coach, coaches, Floyd and and and, um, and Carl and, and Franklin and all those who've been involved, and especially the, the analysts, um, Avanesh, understanding what it will take to win the World Cup and start putting measures in place. Sammy also revealed that his World Cup squad is all but selected with room for one or two more players to create an X factor in both the batting and bowling departments. I probably sh quite sure as to what my World Cup team will be. It's based on the measures that we've taken and the strategic roles that we've given players to do that. Um, we we notice that the ability in the middle overs to play spin was a, 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 a factor for us. Um, you see the Im the implementation of or the introduction of Shea Hope into T20 cricket. Nicholas Puran moving from number five there about to number three, who is um, probably one of our best players of, of, of spin. And over the last year, uh, where before 2023, where we were averaging six or so runs per over between overs number seven to 15 where international teams were going at seven, close to eight. We have now changed that. St. Catharines Juniors are the champions of the Barbados Cricket Supplies Under-13 tournament. Playing in the final against Franklin Stevenson Academy at Queen's Park, the boys from the East took first knock. Winning the toss and taking first knock, it was Shakobi Gittins here with this four and Javion Batson to open the batting for St. Catharines Juniors. Giddings took no time in truly settling in at the crease and turns this one nicely to the boundary. But he lost his opening partner, Batson, after they had built a 49-run partnership, given LBW to Marcus Jackman. Batson made 10. Franklin Stevenson Academy claimed the first wicket. 
That brought Shaniko Sargent to the crease and he announced his arrival with a big one, struck powerfully over the ropes for a six and the St. Catherine supporters loved it. Gittins in the meantime continued to get boundaries as well. He was timing and placing the ball well. Here he goes again, Gittins not playing his shot selection on point. This is actually the seventh delivery that Gittins dispatched to the ropes. He was batting with class. But it would come to an end when he was bowled by Najee Ward. Gittins wrapped up 39 of 31 balls. A good opening knock on his part as St. Catherine's juniors are now 92 for two. Kimani Innes came in, but it was a mere visit to the crease as he was caught by Davico Stevenson for a duck. The score 93 for three. The fourth wicket went shortly after as Zaire Kelma was stumped. Keeper Javante Mears not missing a beat. It's 99 for four. Sarge will be the next wicket to go bold by Ward. The score now 109 for five. Not a single run was added and the sixth wicket fell. As there was chaos at the crease, Amari Ames runs down the pitch but the throwing comes in and the bells are off. He's run out. St. Catherine's Jr. is now 109 for six and they will eventually be all up for 176. Setting Franklin Stevenson Academy 177 to win. And the academy fell short, being held to 119 all out in 32.5 overs. Michael Bay was not out on 27, while Kimani Innes took three for 20, as St. Catherine's Juniors won by 57 runs. On tonight's Yes Business Report, we feature chocolatier Sharika Lord. Her business, Al Colate, is a four year initiative that is bearing fruit. Trevor Thorpe has more. A chocolatier, under the French definition, is an artisan and small batch producer who creates chocolate confections which they make themselves. That describes Sharika Lord, who said she developed the idea after the start of the pandemic. I wanted to bring something new to the inter entertainment industry, so I started to look on YouTube to find different creative things that I could do. And then I saw this boozy chocolate idea that actually caught my eyes and I decided to invest and look into researching what I could do to bring this to life in Barbados. She said the youth entrepreneurship scheme was a lifesaver when she started the business. One of the things that I could say that I really, really appreciate yes, as far as putting us on to like the different opportunities to sell our products. So for example, the different pop-up shops. Um, as a new entrepreneur, it's very hard to um, especially when you are actually, when you were, when you start off as working on your business alone, um, that was your only source of income. It's actually very hard to manage that and still pay the large fees to attend these events. So when um, the entrepreneurship scene comes and like covers some of the costs, it actually um, assists us in. It assists me so much. Um, I always, I always show them out on social media because. They have actually helped me in, and I always like suggest the other people to go to them because they are they are very amazing in terms of like that aspect. Um, they also offer programs to help you to refine any business um, any business etiquette, so like financials and um, bookkeeping and those type of things. They also assist in like get helping with the cost of getting some of the, the branding material and the marketing material as well. So that was actually a very, that was a generous help as somebody who's now starting, you know, and especially into a market that is not, that everybody is not in. Ms. Lord added that while Alcolate is among a small number of similar businesses in Barbados, her products can be adapted to suit any occasion. You have a variety of shapes, a variety of sizes. Um, you also have a variety of alcohols, so whether it be tequila, whiskey, uh, rum, you name it, Bailey's. Funny enough, we actually have a Bailey special going on currently. And um, you also get to choose between the different types of chocolate. So whether it's dark, milk, white chocolate, um, you could practically ba basically like build your own chocolate and customize your chocolate. She also said finding them is not difficult. We are an online store um, in the sense that like you would contact us and then you would either collect or you would we would deliver. But 
as I tell you, as the process goes by, um, we eventually have like our own location, and that's one of the things that I want to get also in place in terms of exporting because you want to have your own facility to to at least do the to have the product being made and being it it be a smooth process. Producing for export is also in her plans. Trevor Thorpe for the Business Report. A senior official of the Inter-American Institute for Cooperation on Agriculture has told Barbados the sector is in good hands. Technical specialist Dr. Roxanne Waith made the comment after providing a progress report on initiatives and developments in agriculture between ICA and the Ministry of Agriculture. She says a future farmers think tank has been created by young farmers out of a youth project aimed at maintaining contact with ICA. These young people are all about advocacy in agriculture, encouraging young people to see the benefits of being involved in agriculture. And we serve, at least the eco-delegation serves as their secretariat to help them along with um, whatever projects they undertake. Welcome back, Amory. Over to you for the second half. Thanks, Lisa. Now, football dominates the second half as Barbados Football Association President Randy Harris says the local governing body is committed to the development of players and clubs on the island, but needs the support of administrators and coaches in order to reap success regionally and internationally. Harris was speaking during an interview after he was re-elected as president following the annual general meeting and congress. Many of the clubs do not have uh, junior uh, players, and that is something that we want to see changed. Uh, but there are a lot of things coming up. We have the talent development scheme, FIFA. Uh, we also have uh, a program with the peace, uh, national peace program in the communities. Uh, I think that these will make some differences, but uh, we won't see the, the, the results in the short term. Uh, football in Barbados is, uh, you know, at the crosswords. There are a lot of problems. Uh, when I say there are a lot of problems, um, many of our clubs um, need to support the players first. Um, you know, we're, I think we're one of the few countries in the world uh, that at national level, we don't really support the players. We don't lift them. Um, we just look at the mistakes. Uh, and the results. But we need to, to change things in Barbados and most of all uh, fo the football fraternity in Barbados has to unite. If they don't unite uh, we will never be able to complete um, our development as it should. The law school captured the Barbados Secondary School's under-16 football knockout title after defeating the St. Leonard's Boys 2-0 in the final at the Wildey Turf. CBC's Anmar Goodrich Boys reports. The boys from Richmond Gap playing in red with a set piece. There's a chance for goal, but that's a brilliant save by colleague Lashley. St. Leonard's enjoyed the majority of possession, but it was the boys from Messiah Street who drew first blood. Kadari Simpson with the magic boot from the top draw. Fantastic. 1-0 the score, and they're loving it. This perhaps was one of the best chances for St. Leonard's to get back on level terms. Skillful from the attacker who forced Lashley into action again, and this save was exquisite. Let's take another look at it. Incredible reflexes. A solid defensive performance from Lodge was rewarded late on, bit of a mix-up at the back for St. Leonard's, and it led to this gift wrapped and placed into the back of the net by Shaquem Boys, and that's how it ended. Picture perfect for the Lodge School as they're champions of the under-16 school's knockout competition. And more Goodridge Boys, CBC Sports. Uh, in the under-19 final, the Samuel Jackman Prescott Institute of Technology prevailed 3-2 over the St. George Secondary thanks to a stunning hat-trick from Kairos Graves. Roger Collins and DeAndre Mitchell were on the score sheet for St. George. And that's our news for tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in. Good night.